Well, good morning. A very warm welcome to this online traditional service. Now we've entered this second lockdown, we're going to continue uh, throughout the lockdown period to offer three services each Sunday, and uh, that includes this online traditional service. So we begin our worship this morning on this Remembrance Sunday with an opening prayer. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come to our prayers of penitence. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name.
So we're going to have two readings this morning. The first is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning to read from verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds, together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And the second reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, beginning to read from verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. And now we're going to hear from Bishop Donald. Lord, help us to prepare to meet you whenever that time may be. Amen. That may seem a fairly stark prayer and a, a, a difficult way of introducing a sermon or getting into one, preparing to meet God. Of course, it's Remembrance Day, and for many there is a sense of remembering those who have met God. It's also the third Sunday of Advent. I'm going to focus today on the Gospel reading, which is for the third Sunday of Advent, uh, I've also uh, done a, a talk on Psalm 46, more uh, Remembrance Day focused, which will be up on our uh, diocesan website and so on on Tuesday. There's a lot in the New Testament about uh, the return of Jesus, the second coming, the final judgment, however you put it. And in, in these Sundays running up to Advent, uh, we, we think about that, and in this uh, liturgical year, when we're focusing on Matthew's Gospel, uh, these last few weeks before Advent uh, are looking at three of the parables Jesus taught about the Second Coming, the Last Judgment, and so on, uh, during the last week of his earthly life. Uh, so today, third Sunday, next week, second Sunday before Advent, following week, uh, Christ the King, each time uh, we're, we're running up to Advent Sunday when we think of the coming of Jesus, which this year is the last Sunday of November. And today's uh, parable is uh, Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Uh, given various titles, the, the wise and foolish virgins is the traditional one. Uh, Tom Wright, in his translation, which I'm, I'm looking at a little bit today, is, is delightfully fresh and, and straightforward. And he talks about um, 
10 girls, five of them silly and five sensible. And that may summarize it too. Uh, some of the, the clergy and some of those who've been trained properly in preaching and understanding scripture will have been told that you, you, you mustn't um, find allegory in parables. Parables mustn't be interpreted in that way. Actually, it's completely plain that in these uh, parables of uh, the kingdom and parables of judgment at the end of towards the end of Matthew, they're full of allegory and Jesus is deliberately using allegorical pictures. So the, the wedding feast is the kingdom of heaven. It is God's people meeting up with him in joy and in glory. Uh, the bridegroom is Christ who is coming and his return. And when people have the door closed on them, that is judgment. These are allegorical, they're pictures, but it's very clear what they're representing. Uh, so if, if you've ever been taught, uh, don't see multiple meanings, don't see allegory in parables, uh, just forget that for a little while. It, it was a bit of theological thinking from the 19th century, which we do well to get rid of. Some parables like this one are full of allegory in that sort of way. One, one picture representing another, a bridegroom equals Jesus, a marriage feast equals the blessings of heaven, and so on. And this is a strange story, uh, and it actually has a lovely message for us, a, a realistic message, which goes counter to some of the way we can interpret other bits of the New Testament. It's always important in our, our Bible understanding not to interpret one part of the Bible to be in contradiction to another, and particularly not to interpret one part of Matthew's Gospel to be in contradiction to another. The whole is one piece, and if we want to understand what it means, we shouldn't ignore certain bits. Now, it's often said that in the New Testament, they believed, and Jesus believed, and St. Paul believed, that the second coming, Jesus' return, was imminent. It would be very, very soon. And some of the parables, some of the stories, some of the language look like that. Although there's a bit of confusion towards the end of Matthew's Gospel in our thinking. Is this referring to the second coming, or is it uh, referring to Jesus' predictions, his prophecy of the destruction of Jerusalem? which actually happened under the Roman Empire in 70 AD, not that long after uh, Matthew was written, not that long after Jesus died, bearing in mind he was a young man when he died. His contemporaries, some of them would have lived to see the destruction of Jerusalem, and that's part of a, a stage of judgment, it's portrayed as that. But we, we get this idea that the New Testament writers were sort of kind of wrong, and even Jesus may have been mistaken because they thought that the second coming, the judgment, would be very, very soon. Well, actually, here in this parable, Jesus is saying different. He's saying the wise believer, let's take it that these 10 girls, sometimes bridesmaids, slightly imaginatively in some translations, um, uh, they're waiting for the coming. And the wise ones are those who are prepared for a long wait, not a short wait. And that's a balance to the other views that the kingdom, the last judgment, the return of Christ is imminent. Here it's saying if, if you're wise and you're looking forward to the marriage feast and you're waiting for the coming of the bridegroom, the king, the Christ, if you're wise, you'll be ready for a long wait. You'll have plenty of oil ready. You, you won't let your lamp run out. You won't, as we say, burn yourself out. You won't, you'll be ready for him to come in five minutes or tomorrow, but you'll also be ready if it takes quite a bit longer than that. And in this story, uh, slightly ridiculously, uh, in the middle of the night, a shout went up, here's the bridegroom, come on and meet him. So they, they didn't have exactly you know, 2.30 p.m. arrival times. It was sometime in the day he would come, the bridegroom to the feast. And they did weddings differently from us, but that was how they did them. 
uh, different people would arrive and it would begin when the bridegroom arrived, the others would be waiting for him. That, that's how it was. Uh, can you imagine hanging around in church uh, for a wedding due to start, you haven't been told, but maybe the middle of the day, and the main participant in our culture would be the bride, isn't just a bit late, but gets there sometime around midnight. Um, I think the guests would not only have fallen asleep and put their lamps out, they'd have gone home in a bit of high dudgeon. But that's what's going on here. It's a bit shocking, it's surprising. It makes no earthly sense at all for the bridegroom to arrive after midnight for his wedding. It, it doesn't make any sense in terms of a wedding. But if we're thinking that this represents the second coming, the return of Christ, it makes a lot of sense because Jesus is saying, you may be in for a long wait. You don't know. You don't know what the day or the hour will be. And he actually teaches you don't know what the day or the hour will be. It's not just what time today. You don't know when. But the wisdom is to be ready for his coming. And those who are ready for his coming will be welcomed into his feast, his kingdom, the joys and the blessings. And those who aren't ready, those who've given up, well, the door may be shut. There is such a thing as judgment. And this does link in, of course, with Remembrance Day. It links in with the difficulties of life. Does the fact that the world isn't the perfect place, does the fact that all the work that Christians and other people do to try, to make, try and make the world better, does the fact that all our kingdom endeavours just keep going on and still there are earthquakes and famines and wars and rumours of wars and injustice, does that mean Christ isn't coming? No. Does it mean there won't be a, a sorting out and a putting right? No. But the wisdom from this parable is that we need to be ready and it might be a long wait. Not that he isn't coming, he is coming. It might be at a completely unexpected time, like the middle of the night for a bridegroom. But it might be a, a long wait and the woes and the sadnesses and the difficulties of this life and the joys too will continue during that long wait and during that long wait in our terms we'll have births and marriages and deaths we'll have wars and rumors of wars and remembrance and armistice and memorials we'll have plagues and famines and we'll get through them and we'll have technological progress and lack of moral progress in our world and we will be faithful and we'll be waiting for the kingdom we'll be working for good for the common good while we're waiting but we'll be waiting for Christ coming assured that he will come but not knowing when the Lord bless you amen Let's say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let's pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Donald and John, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, 
Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and have a few moments to name those you know to the Lord. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this Remembrance Sunday, hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. And again, have a few moments to name those you know to the Lord. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. We conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning for this online traditional service. As I've said, they will continue now throughout the second uh, lockdown period. Do keep in touch with us. If you're not on our email uh, distribution list, then uh, drop me an email using the email addresses that come up at the end of this service. We'll finish with a final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.